Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 114 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the -the behind-the-scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips, and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. Well, hey there, friends. Welcome back. I don't know when you're listening to this, but it is Monday morning for me. I always record my podcast on Monday morning, and I've been thinking about you so much over the last week or so because this time of the year is such an exciting time of the year. It's such a cool time because if you've been teaching the same group of students for the whole year or even student teaching for just part of the year, you've built this great connection and this relationship with your students. And there's these mixed emotions of feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're going to have to say goodbye soon. You've built these great relationships and this great foundation, but there's also this excitement about summer coming so soon and summer holidays. And man, what a year we've had, right? So I think everybody's ready to head into summer. I don't know when you're finished school. For me, it was always June 15th. It seemed like right around June 15th in Canada. And the reason I remember that so clearly is because that's my birthday. So mid-June was always an exciting time. I always wanted like a pool party for my birthday because it was the end of the school year. So wherever it is for you, I know here in Kentucky, it's actually sooner than that. A lot of the kids are out in mid-May or even maybe a little earlier than that, depending on where you're teaching. So wherever you are in your teaching year, I'm with you. I'm excited for you. And there's always those mixed emotions of feeling like, oh, you have to say goodbye after this incredible year you've gone through. But I know that you're all excited for summer. And I hope you're going to take a break and hopefully get a little bit of travel in if you've been vaccinated. Hopefully you'll get a chance to go and see some loved ones that you haven't seen in a while and do some things that we haven't been able to do for a whole year. Oh, as the world opens up again, it's an amazing feeling. So hopefully we're going to get there. Now this week, we are heading into week number eight of our beginning teacher training series of the year, where every week I've been sharing fresh new content for you to guide and support you as you prepare for your first or second or third year of teaching, really the foundational basics so that you can feel fully prepared on that first morning and during that first week of school. So today we're going to be talking all about five heart-centered strategies to build relationships with your students in the first weeks of school. And even if you're heading into the end of the school year, you might want to pick up a few ideas for how to really finish the year off strong in terms of relationship with your students. And even though we're months away (laughs) from the first weeks of school, many of you I know are already thinking about this. And I know that you're concerned about how it's all going to go down in that first week of school, especially if this is going to be your first year of teaching. I've received lots of questions about what kinds of things you can do during that first week of school to create an amazing classroom community. So today we're going to talk all about that. But before we dive in, I want to invite you to a very special masterclass that I'm holding very soon called Four Secrets to Success in Your First Years of Teaching. We're going to talk all about what you can do this summer to be truly ready for the school year. Now, this masterclass is very different than the other episodes inside this training series because it will not be available as a replay on this podcast. I want to repeat that. This training coming up, all about Four Secrets to Success in Your First Years of Teaching, will not be available as a replay on this podcast. And inside Inside that masterclass, you're going to learn how to create your vision for your classroom, even if you can't set foot in the school and you don't know what grade you're going to be teaching. I'll walk you through how to get clear about your vision for your classroom and how to make important decisions about classroom design that's going to save you both time and money. You'll learn what you can do right now to prepare and get organized. I'll show you how to think through your classroom layout, even if you haven't seen your classroom yet, how to set up four simple 
simple, essential organizational systems that's going to help you clear the clutter and create systems for success for the entire year. We'll talk about how to create a classroom management system that works, and I'll show you how to design a self-running classroom that impresses your principal. Wait till you hear the story of what happened to me. It's it's going to blow your mind. And finally, I'm going to share you the number one secret that master teachers know to ensure success on the first day of school. It literally took me years to learn this, but you're going to get it all in 45 minutes. And to sweeten the deal even more, I have a surprise gift for you just for showing up live. Gift giving is my love language, so show up live and stay until the end, and I'll give you a surprise gift that every teacher needs in their classroom, no matter what grade you're teaching on the first day of school. You're going to love it. So to register for this masterclass, just go to drlauriefriesen.com forward slash masterclass. That's drlauriefriesen.com forward slash masterclass. Now, if you don't know how to spell my name, it's D-R-L-O-R-I-F-R-I. IESEN.com forward slash masterclass. All right. I'll also include the link to this masterclass in the show notes for this episode, episode 114. Okay. I won't make you wait any longer. Let's dive into today's topic and talk about five heart centered strategies to build relationships with your students in the first weeks of school. All right. Now, if you're new to the podcast, you might not know that I've taught in quite a few different places around the world. I've taught in Canada and Japan. I've traveled extensively and lived in Australia for a year, traveled to New Zealand for a few months. I lived in Hong Kong for two years. I've traveled to Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, China, Italy, Greece, Germany. The list goes on. And I've taught pre-service teachers at the University of Lethbridge. I've worked with lots of teachers in California as I implemented my literacy program there. And if there's one thing I've learned as I've taught in all these different contexts, no matter where it is around the world and what age my students are, it's this. The quality of relationship you build with your students directly impacts how effective your classroom management plan is, how motivated your students are to learn, and ultimately their level of achievement. So this isn't just a nice thing to develop. It really matters in so many different areas. And maybe most importantly, it impacts your satisfaction and your enjoyment of teaching. If you've been following me for a while now, you might have heard the story about Mackenzie, who I taught in second grade, and that was like 20 years ago. Now, you probably have a Mackenzie in your classroom. In the training I did on Facebook, I show you a picture of Mackenzie as the adorable seven-year-old I taught nearly 20 years ago, and she's with another little girl in my class named Sierra. And these two girls couldn't be more different. Mackenzie was the social butterfly in our classroom. She has one of the biggest, most bubbly, most charismatic personalities I've ever seen. But as a result, she also had a really hard time getting her work done. I felt like I spent so much of my time trying to find creative ways to keep her on task without breaking her bright sunshine spirit. So let me know. Do you have a Mackenzie in your classroom too? Reach out and let me know. Now, Sierra, the other little girl who's with her in the picture, was without a doubt the most lightning smart student in our class. She was just whip smart. And although their strengths were so different, those two were pretty much inseparable in second grade. I think they just complemented each other so well with their strengths. And when Mackenzie found out that I had launched a podcast, she decided to write a review. Now to her, I was Mrs. Friesen. And she wrote this, I still remember Mrs. Friesen as being one of the most inspiring people I have been blessed to encounter. Mrs. Friesen taught me that I could do anything I set my mind to. This was something that my anxious seven-year-old self needed to be reminded of often, and she did just that. Mrs. Friesen truly made every student feel cared about and supported, regardless of their personal situation. I will never forget the care that she showed each of her students. I can only hope that one day I will be able to impact a child's life as much as she impacted my own. Mrs. Friesen is truly changing the lives of children in her classroom. Now, that's what she wrote, but I'm sharing this because over and over, I've started to notice a real pattern. Whenever my students reach out, 
it's usually to tell me that they know how much I cared about them. And because I had taken the time and paid careful attention to intentionally building these relationships with my students, everything else in my classroom worked because I had that relationship with them. When I messed up, they were compassionate towards me. When I wasn't sure what I was doing, if I wasn't as well prepared some days, I was a new teacher. They were so sweet because we had built that relationship. They worked with me. Eventually, I understood. I learned that my students listened when I spoke because they knew that I had taken the time to listen to them. So of course, my classroom management became a lot easier because I knew them and their interests so well, because I had taken the time to learn what they were really interested in. I was able to create more engaging lessons for them that I knew they would enjoy because I know what they're interested in. So of course, my students' motivation increased, which ultimately, of course, leads to higher levels of achievement because when students are motivated to engage, they try harder, right? So today I'm going to teach you how I did this at the beginning of the school year and how you can do the same thing with your lucky students. So inside this training today, here's what you're going to learn. By the end of this training, you'll walk away with five fantastic ways to build relationships with your students in the first weeks of school and as a result, enjoy better classroom management and increased student motivation and engagement. Can I get an amen? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So the first strategy is to be intentional about getting to know your students while you're teaching your routines and expectations during that first week. So your students need to know you care. So we need to be willing to give before we can get. If we want our students to listen and follow the rules and routines we set up in our classrooms, we can't just dive into content and expect that our students will somehow fall into line. Instead, we need to first let them know that we care about them as people. And this doesn't need to take much time. I know you're anxious to get started and to dive into content, but taking the time to do this at the beginning of the year is going to pay you back all year long. Trust me, I've done this so many times. One of the ways I love to build those relationships and to get to know my students is with something called an interest inventory. Now, interest inventories are great because they can give you just a quick snapshot of what each student's interests are, which subjects are most interested in, and what kinds of books they like. And it's just a series of questions that ask those things basically, or fill in the blanks so that they can share with you all of the things that they're interested in. And it was actually from just doing a simple in interest inventory at the beginning of the school year one year that I discovered that a whole group of my boys in my class, this was in second grade, which is really weird, but they were all obsessed with motorcycles. None of them were really into reading, but they really were into motorcycles. I don't know how this all started, but I decided to feature an entire display of motorcycle books in my classroom library. And guess what? They fought over the books. So I really was able to get my students engaged in reading because I learned this about them from doing an interest inventory. You can learn some fantastic things about your students, as well as find ways to get them engaged in learning that you just might not have known if you didn't ask. Another one of my favorites is an activity called If I Ran the World. It gives you great insight into what they would do differently if they were in charge of running the world. It's so cool. And another one that's called When I Grow Up, which also gives you great insight into what they would like most to change in their lives and what they want most in their lives in their futures. So I also love these because they make fantastic displays in your room especially if you're hosting Meet the Teacher Night, it's a great way to give parents some insight into what their child is thinking and feeling. So cool. You could even bind these together as a class book and put it in your class library so that kids can read about what they each would be interested in doing when they grow up. So much fun. Now, if you're interested in any of these activities, they're all included in my resource, 14 fantastic first week of school activities, which you can get, you will get as a member of the Ready for School Academy if you decide to enroll when I open the doors to that program. It's also available inside my TPT store. So I'll link to that resource in the show notes for this episode if you want to check it out. So here's your action step for strategy number one. I want you to decide on and start planning for one or two activities in the first week of school to really get to know your students. 
That's doable, right? And if you're a student teacher, think about or ask your mentor teacher about some of the ways that they get to know their students and jot them down so you have some ideas handy when you start thinking about planning for your first week of school. Or again, check out my resource on Teachers Pay Teachers to get your creative juices flowing. There are so many fun ways that you can do this. And I promise once you get started, it'll be hard to even choose the two or three that you'll have time for. Now, the second strategy to building relationships with your students in the first weeks of school is to be intentional about helping your students to get to know each other while you're teaching your routines and expectations during that first week of school. So developing relationships with your students means knowing and honoring the relationships and feelings of belonging in your classroom. We know that kids' friends are a huge part of their worlds, right? And when kids don't feel like they belong, when they haven't developed connections with each other, and they don't feel like they're really part of the classroom community, they start acting out because they need attention. And that's often the only way they know how to get it. So if you have a student like this in your classroom right now, a child who just doesn't seem to fit in and doesn't have any friends, are they trying to get attention in negative ways instead? If you have one of these students in your classroom, you're not alone. I know I had them as well. But when you think about the kids who really act out, it's usually the ones who are looking for some attention. And when you take the time to help kids build connections with each other from the start of the year, your behavior outbursts can diminish significantly. They just really need one good friend. And that's why I love doing activities like something in common. So this is a great activity to get students up and moving around, interacting with their classmates, even if they need to still be six feet apart. So one of the ways I help my students to take action to calm their nerves about their new classroom and meeting their classmates and making new friends is to realize they actually have more in common with each other than they thought they did. I want them to build those connections with each other. And it's not nearly as scary meeting new people once you know how much you have in common with them. And I love to pair this activity, by the way, with Melanie Watts' book, Scaredy Squirrel, which is a great book to help kids learn about bravery and taking risks even when they're scared. So this activity is very simple. The students walk around and find something they have in common with each member of the class and write it down. And on the Facebook training, I was able to show you the visual of, it's basically two columns with the student's name, a column for names and a column for what do you have in common. So they get to walk around and find other students that they have something in common with. And not only do they learn each other's names and how to spell them correctly because they have to list them on that page, but they find out so many things they have in common with each other that they'd otherwise never know. So the first person to find 15 people with whom they have something in common wins the challenge, which is so much fun. So here's your action step for strategy number two. I want you to decide on and start planning for one or two activities in that first week to help students get to know each other and discover what they have in common. It's doable, right? There are so many fun ways you can do this. And again, if you have a great idea, go ahead and share it inside our private Facebook group because we'd love to hear it. But the goal is to help students start to make those connections in the first weeks of school so that they aren't seeking that attention throughout the year and feel like they don't belong. All right, the third strategy for developing relationships with your students and building that great classroom community is to practice noticing all the good in your students and reinforcing it to celebrate the uniqueness of each student. Now, if you've been following me for a while now, you've probably heard me talk about Lorraine. Lorraine was one of those incredible mentor teachers I had who I will never forget. She wasn't assigned to me as a mentor. So this is good for you to know if you are in a school and you aren't assigned a mentor, go find your own. She just took me under her wing and was an absolutely amazing mentor for me. She's since passed away she had brain cancer. She left us way too soon. I miss her so much, but I can't even imagine not having her as part of my teaching experience. She was just amazing. So one of the things I learned from Lorraine that I carried forward each year in my own teaching was to find something special about each student and brag them up every single chance you get. It's an amazing strategy. So simple. 
every time, without exception, that I went into Lorraine's classroom, she would pull some kid from what they were doing and say to me, oh my gosh, Mrs. Friesen, you need to meet Chase. And here's something so incredibly special about Chase. Did you know he learned how to play the saxophone when he was only five years old? Chase, tell Mrs. Friesen what you've done with your music. He's really quite impressive. I'm not kidding. Every single time she not only knew those kids, but she was passionately committed to empowering them and lifting them up every single chance she got. Now, another way you can do this inside your classroom is by creating something called secret compliments envelopes. If you've tried this in your classroom, let me know how it worked because I love to see and hear about it when you try these strategies inside your classrooms. Some of you have shared inside our Facebook group when you've used this and it's so much fun to see how it works with your students. Now, this is a great activity to do during the first week of school because it begins to help your students to form the habit of always looking for the positive in each other. So to do this activity, you would first hold a class discussion to brainstorm different compliments we can give to each other and list them on chart paper, and then talk about a variety of positive, kind, and respectful words we could use to describe ourselves using descriptive adjectives. And then you have the children label a large envelope or a paper bag clearly with their name and decorate it with at least three descriptive adjectives to describe themselves. And once they've completed this step, you have them display their envelopes along the bottom of one of your bulletin boards so they're at child height so they can reach into them easily. And then have each child write his or her name on a small piece of paper, put it all into a hat, and each child draws a name. And that will be their secret pal for the week. Or you can have them draw a different name each day, up to you. But the students write brief secret compliments to their pals every morning as their morning warm up when they first enter the room and last thing before they go home at the end of the day. So there's benchmark compliments at the beginning and end of the day. They're starting and ending the day in a positive way, thinking about the good in each other. My students loved this activity. They get to open their envelopes at the end of that week, or maybe even want to do it for two weeks. It's such a great way to build connections and positivity inside your classroom because they get to read all of their compliments and their secret pals can reveal themselves, or you might not even have them reveal themselves at the end. It's either up to you. I've done it both ways. So here's your action step for strategy number three. I want you to decide on and start planning for one way you can stay focused on reinforcing the special qualities you see inside your students and helping them to see the qualities in each other that are so special. There are so many fun ways you can do this again as well. So if you have a great idea, share it, post it inside our private Facebook group because we love to hear great ideas and strategies that you're thinking of. Okay, now moving on to strategy number four, and this is such an important one. So if you're multitasking or listening to this on the treadmill, come back to me because this will make a huge difference when it comes to not only developing relationships with your students, but with developing that positive classroom community. So strategy number four is to share stories about your life and ask your students to share theirs. So one of the things I teach my students inside the Ready for School Academy when I walk them through exactly how to prepare for that first day of school is to create a short slide deck so they can share a little bit about themselves with their students on that first day of school. So I recommend that they share little things about their lives, like if they have any brothers or sisters, or if they have any pets. You can share the best vacation you've ever had, or the best birthday you've ever had, or even even something like what the three best days of your life have been so far, or maybe what scares you or makes you nervous. The point is to invite your students to find out what they have in common with you. Because once your students see you as a human being, as someone who also has brothers or sisters or a puppy like I did named Tango, they're able to connect with you on a different level. Because it's so funny, especially when they're young, many kids don't even think you leave the school. I remember seeing one of my students at the grocery store. She was with her mom and she looks up at me with these huge wide eyes and she says, what? They they let you out of the school? You mean you don't live there? <laughs> and it was so funny because in that moment, I realized how the kids I was teaching 
didn't really know anything about me outside of school. So I started making a point of sharing more about my life. And then once kids find that connection with you and how you're like them in some ways, a real bond can happen. So here's your action step for strategy number four. I want you to think about four or five things that you can share with your students on the first day of school and create a simple slide deck to share with them. That's doable, right? Such a simple and easy way to build connections with your students from the start and intentionally start building those relationships. Okay, now strategy number five for developing those great relationships with your students, and I've saved the best to last. This is so good. I want you to tell your students that you believe in them every single day. Now, I say that I've saved the best until last because remember Mackenzie, who I told you about at the beginning of this training, I'm convinced that the reason she remembers me caring so much is because almost every single morning we started our day in the reading corner, gathered together as a class, and I would say these words to them, which you're welcome to steal and use in your classroom or make up something that resonates with you. But here's what I would say to them. You are so special. You are so smart. I love you just the way you are, and you can do anything you dream of. Who has a dream they want to share? (laughs) So cool, right? I want you to be bold enough to share your own dreams, to model what that looks like with your students and that it's possible. So I regularly shared how I took ideas and dreams that I had when I was in high school and turn them into reality for my students. So you know how I shared at the beginning of this training, how I traveled and taught in different countries. I told my students that those things happen first as just a thought and that I took action on those thoughts to make them a reality. I didn't come from a family with money. My dad was a cop and my mom worked part-time at the bank, but I worked extra jobs in high school to save money because I knew I wanted to go to Australia. So when all my friends were going out to eat in high school, I usually didn't order any food when we were out. And instead, I saved that money every single time we went out. I would put it into my bank account and I kept saving up for my first ticket to Australia. I had to continually make that effort every single time we went out with my friends and not spend money on that so I could spend money on a ticket for Australia. I showed my students pictures. I told them stories about my adventures. You know, I had a treasure chest in my classroom if you've been listening for a while. So the dreams you can share don't need to be huge, like traveling to other countries. You can share that you've always wanted to become a teacher and share how you actually took steps every single day for years in order for that dream to become a reality. And here you are. Maybe you've always dreamed of having a dog. Maybe you've always dreamed about becoming a mom. Maybe you've always dreamed about visiting a special place or going to Disneyland. This doesn't have to be a big dream. You don't have to have traveled. They just need to see examples of how an idea or a dream can become real with focused effort over time. That's all. It's not the size of the dream that matters. It's the confidence that comes with turning hopes into reality that really matters. And it only takes a moment, but those small moments add up over time. And once your students know that you truly believe in them, anything is possible. Think about what we're doing on this podcast. I'm showing up for you every single week and I really believe in you. I know that you can become an incredible teacher. I know you can become your state's teacher of the year. I know you can do anything that you really want to. I really believe in you and I'm showing up every single week and I'm telling you that it's possible, right? Do the same thing for your students. So here's your final action step. I want you to think about one thing you could be intentional about saying to your students, some kind of affirmation that you could say to your students every single day so that they eventually hear your voice in their heads every time they doubt themselves, every time they fail or make a mistake or disappoint you or disappoint their parents or disappoint themselves. Remember, saying that you love them just the way they are means that they're still loved even when they make a mistake or when they have a bad day like we all do. But hearing your words in their head on a daily basis can add up 
to little ones like Mackenzie saying the words years later, Mrs. Friesen taught me that I could do anything I set my mind to. This was something that my anxious seven-year-old self needed to be reminded of often, and she did just that, right? She noticed it made a huge impact on her. It's a small thing, but it has monumental benefits. It's doable, right? And if you have an idea of what you want to say to your students every morning, go ahead and share it inside our Facebook group because the more you share, the more we all benefit from your great great ideas. You might even want to make a poster. I did that in my classroom of the affirmations that I said to my students. I wanted them to read it with me. So we've covered a lot today, but let's do a quick review of five fantastic strategies to build relationships with your students in the first weeks of school. Now, the first one is to be intentional about getting to know your students. So don't dive directly into content, but build in time to do an interest inventory or other activities that will give you insight into your students' interests and abilities so you can create lessons that are truly engaging for your students. And again, if you decide to enroll in the academy, I'll walk you through exactly how to do that, which routines to teach on the first day of school, which um, expectations to have and how to set those up. I'll walk you through all of it. Second, be intentional about helping your students to get to know each other. So activities that help students to discover things they might not have known they have in common can really help to build relationships and bonds among students who previously didn't know each other that well and to help all kids feel like they belong. If they build those connections with each other, they'll feel more a part of the community. You'll have less acting out throughout the year. Third, take a page out of Lorraine's book and practice noticing all the good in your students and reinforcing it to celebrate the uniqueness of each student. You will not believe the power of this and how good it makes you feel to really notice them and celebrate them. So much fun. Number four, share stories about your life and ask your students to share theirs. So create a simple slide deck for the first day of school to let your students get to know you. Again, I share all this with you inside the Ready for School Academy. And number five, tell them that you believe in them every single day and share success stories from your own life. Now, remember, you don't need to do any of this alone. I invite you to join our community inside my Beginning Teacher Talk private Facebook group. If you're not already a member, I hope you'll come join us. I'll post the link for you in the show notes for this episode in case you aren't a member yet because it's just an amazing group. Also, of course, I hope you'll join me for my free masterclass, which is the last training in this series. And in my opinion, it's the very best one. But you do need to register in order to save your seat for this free masterclass. It will not be available as a replay on the podcast. The only way you can have access to this training is by registering. It's called Four Secrets to Success in Your First Years of Teaching. And I'll walk you through what you can do this summer to ensure that you're truly ready for the school year. Seats are limited, so be sure to reserve your seat right away for this free training at drlauriefriesen.com forward slash masterclass. And if you have any new teacher friends who you think would benefit from this masterclass, go ahead and share that link with any other teachers in their first or second or third year of teaching who need a more streamlined and organized way to prepare for the school year. And I'll post the link for you in the show notes for this episode, episode 114. So be sure to check it out and reserve your seat. All right, my friends, thank you so much for spending what I know to be very precious time with me today. I hope you have a wonderful week and I really hope to see you again next week for my masterclass. Until then, remember, Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there's no need for you to struggle like one. I hope you're truly beginning to understand that I really mean that and believe it. Bye for now.